Let's be honest, Nvidia have fallen behind in terms of software and drivers. Sure, the drivers do what they say on the tin, but when looking at software, at least in comparison to AMD and Intel, they are severely lacking. Or at least until now, with the release of the Nvidia app. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello oh, mate, you alright? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just gotta put it together, it's gonna be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all-important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. While AMD and Intel have really stepped up their game as of late with all-encompassing tools that allow you to measure your system's vital information, tweak them to your own perils, and adjust settings for capturing and streaming. NVIDIA have been using a software application that, well, looks like it's from Windows 95. And while there is the argument of, if it's not broke, don't fix it, something with a bit more glitz and glam at least would be nice, right? Well, it appears that NVIDIA have been listening and are now introducing the new NVIDIA app, which is made for both desktop and mobile users in a bid to rival AMD's own software. Now, before we look at the new app, let's kind of go back a bit and look at what's being replaced, the ancient relic that is NVIDIA's control panel and the more modern GeForce Experience software. Now, the control panel itself goes way back to about 2005, 2006, and since then, it's pretty much stayed there. Now, don't get me wrong, it still works, but it can be a bit, let's say, clunky and unresponsive at times, so it's definitely due a bit of a revamp. Now, in its day, the control panel was the go-to for adjusting the settings of your GPU, allowing you to alter individual apps as well as all apps through global settings. You could also use it for configuring your displays, ensuring that they were running at the right refresh rate, or maybe even adjusting their colors and setting up multiple displays. Most of this can actually now be done easily within Windows. So I guess the control panel doesn't see much action nowadays, and I guess it's just a little bit redundant. Now, Nvidia's other app is GeForce Experience, and I guess it's a bit more modern and responsive, though it's still quite old, having been released back in 2012. Now, over time, the app has improved, and for the most part has aged, I guess, pretty well. It offered a solid suite of features, including a convenient way for installing game ready or studio drivers, depending on your needs, as well as a tool for optimizing your game settings with a click of a button. And also an in-game overlay, which included many benefits such as hardware information, temperatures, clock speeds, and frame rate, along with the ability to take screenshots and screen recordings through shadow play, and completely change the way that your game actually looks through the use of freestyle game filters. GeForce Experience offered a nice suite of tools, though I must admit, I never really used many of them, other than the screen capture functionality that we use for when we're making videos. Now, when it comes to drivers, I'll just grab them from the NVIDIA website. Game optimization didn't really benefit me personally, and Shadow Play would have kind of always had moments where sometimes it was actually, you know, disable itself when I needed it the most. Aside from those, I guess, personal issues, is there anything actually wrong with GeForce Experience? Well, for a start, it required you to log in, which is just, well, a nightmare because it didn't really serve a purpose. For us reviewers who are constantly changing systems, I can honestly say that it was a massive bane in my life. And as I said, something that just didn't really add anything into the software and was just kind of, well, I guess pointless. So with the groundwork established, what is the new Nvidia app providing us that the control panel and GeForce experience haven't actually done so far? Well, as simply put as possible, the NVIDIA app is effectively just both of those apps fused together, but with a much improved UI. And unlike GeForce Experience, you don't actually need an account to use the app. Yes, no more logins. So personally, I wanna to say to NVIDIA directly, thank you for that. It was also a weird move that everything was essentially split. And when GeForce Experience launched, I think many users were hoping that maybe things from the NVIDIA, the OG control panel, would actually be moved over and GeForce Experience would slowly but surely get better with added functionality. But it just never happened. 
Instead, Nvidia have released a new Nvidia app. And while it's still in beta phase, the hope is that everything will be moved over and eventually the control panel and GeForce experience will eventually be phased out. So what's the new app actually all about? And you know, how does it work? Well, the main thing that I noticed is the speed. The older and clunky UI sometimes took what felt like an age just to even open and would then, once opened, stutter on certain pages. And in all honesty, this doesn't give the overall user experience much hope. Now, the new app, however, is much, much faster in frankly every way, from simply opening it up to navigating around. And I'd like to think this has been quite a big focus for Nvidia after feedback from their users. So it's nice to see that they've taken that on board. Now, the UI hasn't, I guess, changed too dramatically. The color schemes are the same as GeForce Experience, but the main thing is with the overall layout. It is much clearer and much cleaner with kind of dedicated tabs on the side for each menu. We now have Home, Drivers, Graphics, Redeem, and Settings. It's nice and simple. The Home tab shows off your game library where you can hover over the games to either launch them or alter their graphics settings, as well as a Discover section for Nvidia's other apps, including GeForce Now, Nvidia Broadcast, Nvidia Omniverse, Nvidia Canvas, iCat, and FrameView, each with either an open or download button. Now, it's a nice addition, allowing you to see all the other apps that Nvidia offers within one hub, and you can one-click install them a bit like modules, like we've seen on software from the likes of Asus or Gigabyte or MSI with their own respective control centers. Now, while the integration is nice to see, upon trying to download iCat or FrameView, we were greeted with an error, but I guess being in beta, it's easy to blame it on that, while GeForce Now managed to install and open flawlessly. And speaking of GeForce Now, while you don't have to log in for the core functionality of the Nvidia app, utilizing aspects like that will actually require a login. But I guess that's kind of expected anyway, as it's a service that you sign up and then pay for. So it needs an account, right? You can also go into the settings for each individual game or application. So essentially a shortcut to the graphics tab, but we'll go through that in a minute. Moving over to the Drivers tab, which has seen some much needed improvements in readability compared to GeForce Experience. Here you can choose between either Game Ready Drivers for gamers or Studio Drivers for professionals by using the drop down button in the top right. Alongside this, you can clearly see exactly what's been updated in the latest driver with clear and concise separation between what's new and what's fixed, followed by bullet points for each change and fix. This is now especially handy if you play a certain game religiously and yeah, you don't want to update your driver unless it specifically has changes for the games that you play. You can even view the release notes directly for the driver you're on by clicking the three dots in the bottom right of the screen. Again, this is especially handy for us tech media, but I can see it actually being quite useful for the general consumer base as well. Now, of course, Nvidia have baked in some, uh, yeah, let's not beat around the bush. Let's call them adverts, touting the features of their latest technologies. But in all honesty, the images help to split up the screen a little anyway, so I'm not overly mad about that. You also have the option to reinstall the driver in case you're having system instability issues, which is nice to see. But something that isn't implemented yet, but will be nice to see maybe in the future, is the ability to roll back your drivers. A highly important addition, as whilst AMD gets a lot of flack for bad drivers, Nvidia aren't 100% innocent either, and their drivers can, on occasion, cause some bother. Now the graphics tab is where we finally see a modern variant of the Nvidia control panel. Here we get access to the 3D settings interface from the control panel, allowing us to alter graphics settings for individual applications, as well as on a global basis. Here is where you also have access to the optimization tools, which with one click will apply the recommended settings for a game based upon your system. This is probably the biggest thing for me personally. So many times lately have we had YouTube comments about what game settings we use and you know, screenshotting games can be a bit of a nightmare with pages upon pages of different settings. So this may allow us to do our work just a little bit easier. It also lets you change the settings depending on what your needs are, slide it down for more performance or up for better quality. And it will even show you what those settings will look like before you enable them. Again, being part of the reviewing community, this will allow sharing settings so that our viewers can potentially replicate our own data much easier and something that will personally save me a ton of time. Hopefully, and this is just, you know, something that I'd like to see, there may be a way of exporting settings to share with other people. Again, just making my own life a lot easier. So Nvidia, if you're listening, please look into it at least. 
Now, the only thing missing that I can see is the changing of individual settings like turning ray tracing on or off, as the amount of game developers who have got such a simple thing wrong where you have to restart the game when changing those settings, like we see in Hogwarts Legacy, for instance. Hopefully, again, if Nvidia are listening, that's something that they can work on as the software matures, but would likely be, I don't know, quite a tricky one as each game is different. But I'm not a software developer, so I'm just kind of spitballing. Now, within the global settings tab, you can see two new settings, RTX Dynamic Vibrance and RTX HDR, which leads us into the NVIDIA overlay. Now, the NVIDIA overlay is a very useful tool, which allows you to access various additional features if you had GeForce Experience installed. This overlay UI has been revamped with the new NVIDIA app to make it a whole lot more pleasant to use. It features a single tab that appears on the left-hand side of the screen, which is I guess a much clearer UI than the GeForce Experience one that overlaid across the whole center of the kind of window. Now, it also matches much closer with Windows UI designs and all of the tools for shadow play are clearly seen, including record, instant replay, screenshot, and photo mode, alongside a gallery of all your captures, which appears at the top of the UI. You can also toggle if your microphone is captured near the bottom of the list with the options of always on, push to talk, and off. Now, another big change for shadow play is the ability to record at 120 FPS as opposed to just 60, like we're more commonly used to. This is actually great for those, let's say gaming moments where you wanna slow things down to really get some dramatic effect to include into your videos. Then at the bottom of the list is the game filter section or better known as Nvidia Freestyle. This, as mentioned earlier, would allow you to transform how your game looks with various settings to alter color, contrast, vignetting, depth of field, and a whole lot more bringing us back to RTX Dynamic Vibrance and RTX HDR features. Now back at CES 2023, Nvidia revealed their RTX HDR technology, which could transform SDR videos into HDR videos. But it wasn't until January this year that this technology was actually released. At its release, this was exclusively for changing SDR videos into HDR, and there was nothing to do with games. But it didn't take long for gamers to mod this feature into games. Fortunately, now this mod is just not required, as with the NVIDIA app, RTX HDR and RTX Dynamic Vibrance has been implemented as an NVIDIA Freestyle profile. Both RTX HDR and Dynamic Vibrance make use of AI technology to improve your visuals. So starting with RTX Dynamic Vibrance, which improves upon the previous digital vibrance feature of the NVIDIA control panel. It enhances your games on a per app basis, allowing for the colors to really pop more on screen with a perfect balance to minimize color crushing and preserve image quality. RTX HDR is exactly what it says on the tin. It uses AI to bring the vibrant world of HDR to games that just don't feature HDR support. Nvidia states that surprisingly, only 10 of the 50 most played GeForce games offer HDR support with thousands of games that only support SDR. So right away, we can see there is a huge market of opportunity with this technology. With this, we'll be able to give some of the 1200 games which support Nvidia Freestyle a nice new HDR look. And it'll be interesting to see how right it gets this through the use of AI, because some game developers get it completely wrong with overexposure and oversaturation, like a Plague Tale Requiem, for instance, which just feels like the sun is always out. And in all honesty, it's a bit much. You can also select profiles within the overlay so you can instantly toggle between one with HDR or dynamic vibrance on among the other filters or to a profile with everything off or slightly tweak, which is I guess a nice feature. Now we're not quite done with the overlay as there is one more major improvement and that lies in the statistics button right at the bottom of the overlay settings. This has been improved drastically from its GeForce Experience variant and now offers a lot more customizability as opposed to the preset profiles from GeForce Experience. These profiles still exist, but now there's a custom one that allows you to select only the stats that you want to see. Also, you're no longer confined to the four corners as statistics can actually be positioned effectively anywhere you want on the screen and in different orientations, including linear, stacked and double. They're also implementing support for Nvidia LDAP, again, showing that this software has been made for consumers and gamers, but also tech media alike. So moving on from that, the last two tabs on the control panel aren't, I guess, too interesting. The first is the rewards tab, which is where you can redeem coupon codes and exclusive rewards. Right now, there's a Call of Duty GeForce XP bundle for Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone, including one hour double XP and double weapons XP tokens. This page will also be used for redeeming game codes that may have been bundled with your new GPU purchase. You do, however, have to log into your GeForce account to redeem it, but I guess that makes sense and isn't the end of the world as the rest of the app can be used without logging in. And I'll say it again, that is a real godsend. 
Finally, we have the settings tab, which gives details on your current rig, including an operating system, graphics card, driver, display, CPU, RAM, and storage. You can also view more details, which drills down a bit more into CUDA core count, clock speeds, whether resizable bar is enabled, and so much more. Again, this is a great feature for consumers, but as a tech media outlet, this information really is invaluable when you quickly need to check something on a system and you may not have, say, GPU-Z installed, for instance, and you can just copy the text so it's easy to share. So I actually want to say thank you to NVIDIA for implementing this. It's really a huge step in the right direction and will help us on our kind of day-to-day -day when maybe we have problems and we need to tell brands that we work with what's actually inside our system. This is just easy. Also, within settings, there is a shortcut to the old NVIDIA control panel. Now, this shortcut only actually exists as the NVIDIA app is currently only in beta, and not everything from the control panel has been transferred over. However, that will change in the future, and I'm hoping that happens sooner rather than later. But based on what the NVIDIA app has so far, and it's clear to see that they have listened to their user base, it may take some time as they collect feedback on the beta. At the moment, the plans for the app's future include the implementation of GPU overclocking, which is currently in GeForce Experience, driver rollback, just in case something breaks, AV1 support for shadow play, additional DLSS controls, and as mentioned, the rest of the NVIDIA control panel, which will eventually, thankfully, see it disappear completely. Now, we have a lot of things in the pipeline. Unfortunately, some things that existed in GeForce Experience are not going to make the cut. NVIDIA will be discontinuing the broadcast to Twitch and YouTube functions, and also the direct sharing of images and video to Facebook and YouTube. The 360 photo mode feature will also be dropped as well as stereo captures. Now, there is actually reasoning behind this, and the reasoning for it is down to either the feature being underutilized or a better alternative existing elsewhere. The lack of these features has enabled NVIDIA to create a 50% more responsive UI and accommodate 17% less disk space than GeForce Experience though that will have to be double checked after the other features are added, so watch this space. So all in all, some good improvements, which is quite rare for software, as most of the time UI changes and new software just leads to annoyances. But I think you agree that this is a big step in the right direction, and I can't wait to see what happens when everything is ported over from the NVIDIA control panel. And in all honesty, I can't wait for that software to be shelved because this has been a long time coming. As mentioned, this is a beta and NVIDIA are using it to gain feedback from their users. And there's a handy little button in the top right that allows you to directly send feedback to them. So it really feels like the new NVIDIA app is very community driven. And this is something that maybe AMD have had the upper hand on over the last few years. So what I'm trying to say is it's nice to see NVIDIA stepping things up in a big way. And I guess we just have to wait for the full process to be ported over in due course. For now, yeah, that's gonna do it for this one. A bit of a different one for us, but definitely something that I think needed looking at, because while NVIDIA hardware is at the top of its game, their software has always been lacking, especially in comparison to the competition from AMD and Intel. And when buying any product, it's about, to me at least, the whole user experience, and not just what it does behind the scenes. So yeah, let me know what you, what do you guys think? Is it, you know, a big step up or... Are you just a bit disappointed? Is it a bit lackluster? Like I say, it's got a long way to go, but I think it's on the right track. Let us know in the comments section below, because as I said, this is all about feedback. And there we have it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, you can help support us over on Patreon, where you get access to a ton of cool and exclusive benefits, including behind the scenes content, monthly live streams, access to a hidden area on our Discord, and much, much more. The link for all that good stuff is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.